Hey guys, well here it is, the finished guitar right here. Let's go ahead and check this thing out. I'm gonna grab a pick and we'll start out by just strumming some chords. So you can hear how rich the overtones are in this. So that's more than anything, the sustain of the overtones on this guitar is insane. It's an A chord. Amazing. Uh, this really is my favorite guitar right now that, that I have, that I built. Uh, well, my favorite guitar overall. I have a couple guitars that I haven't built that I purchased myself. But this guitar honestly tops them all as far as the tone is concerned. things to say about this guitar a lot of things that I did differently for this one um, a big sort of obvious one that jumps out to people right away just looking at this is this headstock shape and the tuners that I have installed on the headstock which are Steinberger tuners which totally different they're gearless they don't have any gears in them so when you turn the uh, tuning knob it's not, there isn't a set of gears that then turns the post. The post, rather than twisting and wrapping the string around it, the post actually dives down into the headstock, which is how this whole thing is possible, how it's possible to have um, tuners that don't have the knobs on the sides like that. And so it's pretty cool. Uh, the main reason why it's designed to be this way, by the way, is so you can get hyper, hyper precision with the tuners. Supposedly gearless tuners have the equivalence of precision of a 40 to one, 40, 40 to one set of geared tuners. Meaning um, 40 to one would be for every 40 turns of the knob, you get one full turn of the post. Of course, the post doesn't turn here, so that's why I say it's the equivalent of the precision that you would get from that. And uh, that's pretty cool to me. I like precise tuners where it's real easy to just give a little micro nudge to that knob to correct like the tiny, tiniest of wobble that you have in your tuning. You can just give that little turn uh, to correct it, whereas with a set of tuners with a different tuning ratio, it would be very hard to do that because the tiniest little turn of that knob might jump the pitch too far and you'll end up overshooting and then undershooting and it's really hard to land exactly where you want to land. So that's really cool. I like these a lot. I have used them before and I liked them before and I continue to like them. So I'm gonna to continue to use these. Uh, along with the Goto 510 Minis, which I also like. They're more of a traditional tuner uh, or standard. They, they don't, I shouldn't say traditional because they have actually a pretty modern look to them. So, but as far as how they function, they function in a standard way. Uh, what else we got new here? So the bridge, the bridge redesign, I really like on this. I like the shape. I like the swept back look. I like the fact that it is shaped around the splay of the X-Brace. So it's designed to match up with where those X-Brace arms come out. And this sweep of the wings of the bridge 
meet those X brace arms, okay? So there's no extra length of bridge that runs out beyond the X brace. And uh, another thing here that I was doing different is the arc pattern for the bridge pins, which the main reason for that, aside from just having a different look to it, is it puts all of your bridge pins um, along a different plane. Each one is not, the, the holes aren't drilled along the same exact point of weakness or grain line on the bridge plate. What you see very commonly on very old guitars is bridge plates that have been split, and actually sometimes even bridges, not just the plate on the inside, but the bridge itself might be split right along the line of those holes because they're all drilled straight in the line and they're all very close together, right? So that creates a very obvious uh, failure point there or point of weakness. So we can prevent that by simply not having all your strings or all your holes rather, not having them all straight in the line, have them be in different places. And the arc is just a nice attractive way of doing that. Obviously, if you just had them sort of randomly spaced, it would look a little funky. Although, with this funky headstock, maybe not. Maybe it would, I don't know, kinda match up with it. So, I like that. Um, aesthetically, of course, there's the, the purfling, uh, which isn't something I always do, but man, does it add something to it to have that border with the black, white, black, thin dyed fiber strips sandwiching that gorgeous mother of pearl in between it with those nice ebony bindings on the outside to uh, to just complete the look. And then I did the side purfling as well to really pull it all together. Uh, another thing that's different is the Port Orford Cedar. I have done that once before for the neck. It just makes the neck end of the guitar super duper light, which from a ergonomic standpoint, I think is really cool, really fun. It gives a very different feel to the guitar. Uh, and honestly, it's a pretty noticeable difference. Like if I just handed this guitar to a regular player, it's something that they would comment on. They would notice right away. They wouldn't know why, they wouldn't know anything about Port Orford Cedar likely, but they would say, wow, man, this feels light on the neck end. Uh, because a lot of guitars actually feel very heavy and they want to kind of, um, weight-wise, they want to kind of dip on the neck side. So it's kind of nice to have this very light neck, if that's what you want. Some people like a, like the weight to be on this side, and that's fine too. But this is a cool way of getting the neck super light. And Port Orford Cedar has very good stiffness to weight ratio. Um, not too different from Honduran mahogany, so you still get a lot of the stability that you would get from Honduran mahogany. So it's a good choice if you want to lighten things up. Uh, I don't know. I think that's all I have to say about it. It's a gorgeous guitar. It's a fun guitar. It's a triple O, which just means that the tension on the strings is less because the scale length is a little bit shorter, which just gives it a looser feel to it, if that fits your playing style. So yeah, uh, I'll, I'll just play a little bit more. And we're done here. It's a great build. See you guys later. Hey guys, one more thing before we go here. That guitar that you just saw will be available on my website at ericschaferguitars.com. And also, I just opened up two custom build slots for the winter. What that means is that in the winter from November um, until spring, till about April-ish, I will be building two custom guitars at, like the one you just saw. And you can sign up for one of those slots You'll have a consultation with me and we will build your dream guitar. So 
check that out again at ericshaferguitars.com that's all i got for you bye for now all right if you learned something here please give this video a like and subscribe so you can be notified when i release a new diy guitar making video and if you want to really learn more take one of my structured online courses at ericshaferguitars.com or register for a hands-on guitar building workshop here with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania.